Hey, MJ. I have another name for you. Craven. He's here on some kind of hunt. No, if you need me, I'm just a call away. The hell is going on with Pete? He's not himself. This was our dream. We've got a lot to talk about. So first, Brian, my first question for you is, where do we find Peter, MJ, Harry, and Miles at the beginning of Marvel Spider-Man 2 now that we're in the, the third installment of the franchise? Well, you could find us all in the back being late to the panel because we were watching the story trailer as you guys were all watching it backstage. True, That's first true. off. So um, yeah, I think it is. What, what's really great about this game is that we're going to pick up roughly nine to 10 months after um, the events of Miles Morales, which if you've played it, it's an amazing video game by the talented team. And what's really great is we kind of have Pete and Miles, they're a well-oiled machine, they're a great team, they lean on each other, they really support each other and they're really protecting the city. But at the same time, there's a lot of things going on in their life outside the mask. Uh, Miles is applying to college and trying to figure out how to write his college essay. And you yep. have Pete starting his uh, teaching <laughs> career. And then you have MJ, who is still at the Bugle, but, um, under a new leadership with the return of J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Bugle. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> damn, that damn, guy. all right. And, and then Bill, so my next question is for you. So what, can you talk about the, the dynamic of these characters and how working with Insomniac, they're keeping the authenticity of the DNA of these, the core of these characters while still making it their own? Together, working all together, we're all one team. Uh, we all love the characters. We're all, our goal is to make something that you love, that when you play, you say, this was made by fans for fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and John, my next question is for you with the, the new villains that we've seen in this, this game, confirmed villains with Craven, Venom, and Lizard. Can you talk narratively why you, you felt those choices for those villains were important? For us, it really started with Craven. Uh, he's our catalyst for, for the story, right? Like he, you know, before the game starts, he's halfway around the world being Craven, uh, hunting, uh, trying to find the ultimate prey. And he watched from afar as the events of the first two games occurred. Um, and he decided, you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on in New York City. That, that might be my new hunting ground. So um, like I said, Craven's a catalyst for, for everything happening. When he comes to, to New York City, you know, a lot of things start, start going wrong. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have Lizard um, coming, coming out. We have uh, the symbiote uh, coming out. Um, and, and as you saw briefly in, in, in that trailer, um, Miles is forced to, to come face to face with the Mr. Negative, the, the guy who killed his dad. So there's a lot of drama uh, that, that's happening um, in this game. Absolutely. And Jacinda, my next question for you. So I think one of the things fans really appreciate about both of the games is just the environment, just the lived in cities that it feels, it feels like a character in its own. So can you talk about how you elevated that with this new game, especially with the PS5 technology and the new locations that we'll see, like with Coney Island and, and Queens and, and stuff like that? Totally. Yeah. It, we're super excited to finally be able to bring Brooklyn and Queens to our fans. Uh, obviously, Miles is from Brooklyn. Um, Peter Queens. <laughs> Not only does it increase the gameplay space, so there's a lot more uh, places for you to swing to, uh, but it also has some really cool, um, obviously, Marvel landmarks as well as New York landmarks. Um, for example, I know in Queens, everybody has wanted to visit Aunt May's house and perhaps we're, see where Peter lives. I know a lot of fans had wanted to interact with that space, so just being able to like walk in and, and see where he lives is incredible. Oh, and there's a picture of Aunt May's house. Um, the other thing that's really cool is it's introducing a lot of cool landmarks like the East River. So as you could see in our uh, gameplay uh, trailer that we produced a while back, you can now chase the lizards on the East River, which is awesome. Um, and personally for me, I just love seeing the Brooklyn Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and being able to just swing across the water. It's an incredible experience. And Ryan, my next question for you, just following up with the new locations, can you talk about how the, the new traversal techniques that we are implementing in this game affected uh, what you pro your approach to this and, and how you elevated it? Sure. I mean, one of the interesting things with Brooklyn and Queens is you're not always surrounded by skyscrapers anymore. And so 
we thought, what's a really great opportunity? It's something we've seen on, on comic book covers, we've seen it in the movies, we can add the web wings. Um, and that, that was really changed how we look at traversal. Swinging is always our Spider-Man core, that's where we come from, but uh, what we did is design the web wings so that we could integrate them and weave them in with swinging. You gain height and you build speed um, between swinging and the web wings, and you go back and forth and really kind of weave your way through the city. It's really fun. In Brooklyn and Queens, there are some lower spaces, there are some new spaces, um, but you, ha you have to get between Manhattan and uh, the other boroughs by crossing the river. So that's another opportunity where we could really, uh, well, we added these things called jet streams or wind tunnels. You really build speed there, and they just shoot you right along when you're on the web wings. It's really fun, and you know, it's one of the ch chances for us to really push the power of the PS5 there and like hit a level of speed that we hadn't had in the previous game. It's really um, added a new dimension to what we can do with Traversal. We do see, we do, we see Mr. Negative in this trailer, so can you just briefly talk a little bit about how he's still coping with the effects of his game and, and dealing with the loss of his father? Man, well, y'all seen Miles' trajectory, you know, yeah. and just with everything that he's been through with his family and his friends and just getting into this new world that he's, you know, being introduced to, but he's now owning this, this power, but, you know, um, Coming back to Martin Lee, man, that was something big. I didn't think that we would uh, revisit that because we had a lot of emotions on set. And my last question, because we touched on it as well, but the, his powers and his abilities, how is he really, we, we see them evolving and we, we, we see him, we, he has a couple new abilities, so okay. how is he really coming into his own with that, with his abilities? Oh, we got some stuff coming for y'all. Y'all, y'all get ready. October 20th, <laughs> you're gonna be surprised, you're gonna be shocked, you're gonna be on your feet. Literally. You're gonna be screaming, yeah. you're gonna be crying, you're gonna be laughing. So y'all get ready, man. We got some powerful stuff coming for y'all. I apologize to employers everywhere because I hear a lot of people going, I've, I've already booked you know, time off from work you know, from right. October right. 20th for like three days. I'm like, right. What? We have Hi. MJ in the house. So can you talk about what are her ambitions in this game and how her, her, her storyline has evolved from when we last saw her? Yeah, I think she's coming to her own a, a lot more. I think she's understanding who she is as a reporter and as a writer a lot more. Um, you know, she spent a lot of time away from Peter in Simcaria. Um, and she's, she, am I allowed to say this? <laughs> oh. um, you know, she's writing. You know, there's a reason why we wanted Yuri Laura and Najigal here because they are a team. They are, you know, they complement each other really well. Not just what's going on in the superhero world, but what's happening in their lives. And I think that's why, you know, I mean, even when we're shooting our scenes, we're all kind of working together as a team and figuring out how do we put this game together. And I know I, we couldn't be working with better people. Like, I love these people. They're awesome. So I love you too, man. We love you more, bro. They're the, they're the best. Oh, man. There's somebody else that we can't forget about on this panel. Uh -oh. That is uh, the venom of the He's venom in of the here. <laughs> Tony Todd, it, it, it's truly an honor Ooh. to have you on this panel right now. Let's, yeah, let's get yeah. it. And all of a sudden, I get a call from Insomniac to, to test drive Venom. <laughs> and I got to say, it's been the most exciting voiceover journey that I've had wow. to date. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, is there a, can you just talk about the, the casting of this game? I know there, is there a story or something along how, how this happened? Oh yeah, there, um, so I remember we, we cast a lot of the characters pretty quickly. Like obviously we had, you know, Miles, Peter, uh, MJ, um, and then really early we actually, like right before COVID, I think we cast Craven and I knew, I was putting off Venom, I was just putting it off. I was like, I know there's already, you know, there's gonna be so many opinions, what people, and I know I was scared to death. And I remember uh, Patrick, our dialogue um, lead, was asking me, like, what are you looking for? And I said, uh, I don't know. And then I remember, I just happened to be on the internet one day, and I was uh, listening to one of the, I think it was the Candyman, uh, uh, the new Candyman uh, trailer, and I heard Tony, and I was like, hey, if we could get like a Tony Todd, that would be the one. And then a couple weeks go by, I don't think anything about it. And Patrick messages me and goes, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Tony Todd's interested. And I remember he sent a real quick tape in, and it was like, sorry Tony, it was really bad like, audio quality, but it took like three lines and I was like, that's it. <laughs> please, please hire him. Please, whatever he wants, give it to him. And uh, I, think, I think you all know, based on what you heard, it's, 
it's, he's incredible. We have a wonderful, we, you know, there's, you know, there's four of us here from Insomniac, but we have so many Insomniac who are putting so much work into this game. And I, again, I just want to say if they're somehow listening to this, somehow, thank you for all the work that you guys are putting into it right now. It's, yeah. it's incredible. The work they're doing to finish this up is, it's just, you know, you know, I call, I call Insomniac my second family because we just put so much into this. And you can imagine when you're in your family, everybody has opinions, right? Yep. And I think it's probably the only decision I've ever made being a creative director in 10 years where I just said, Tony Todd is going to be Venom. And everybody said yes. So, um, <laughs> Can you just talk a little bit about Venom's motivations and, and his, his personality in this and, and what, why is he so important to the narrative of this game? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Venom is a symbiote. Right, um, and I think the the thing that um, a lot of symbiote stories have in common, and the, and the reason why I think we we connect with them really well, is that it's it's a simple human story. We we all have a darkness inside of us, and then you you put the symbiote on top of that, it really brings out the 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 dark parts of what Spider Man is about: power and responsibility. You heard Yuri talk about it um, a couple minutes ago. Um, and what happens in the story is that that sense of responsibility starts to go away. It's really interesting when you bring the symbiote into you know, these relationships, uh, how it really challenges them, not just externally, because there's cool powers. You know, Ryan was talking about having that, that control in your hand. Oh my God, it's amazing. Um, but the, the, the people you love around you. Tony, I'm coming back to you. Can you talk about your approach to bringing the voice of it to life and how you approached it? For me, Venom was fun to do, and I wanted to make sure that there was a joyous quality in his, in his destruction. I'm glad it was fun for you because it scared the hell out of us. <laughs> it's always fun for me. Yeah, it'd be funny when we were uh, in the recording booth because we would record separately when we were doing gameplay dialogue and every once in a while, Tony, you would come and play in our headphones yeah, before headphones. a line and it was like, oh God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> wouldn't expect it and it was terrifying. And Brian, I'll come back to you real quick. What was that like when you heard Tony voice his lines for the first time officially and what, what, was, that, what was your initial reaction? Well, first relief, because I was like, okay, we made the right choice for sure. <laughs> um, and I think then just general excitement. And I think Tony is so talented that, you know, sometimes depending on, you know, we have so many different characters or so different, so many different actors, you know, sometimes we're, you know, depending on what the role calls for, are we going to, you know, adjust the, the way that they do the line and you just let Tony be Tony and you get magic. Uh, it was like a gift come true to be able to, um, uh, to cement myself in the whole voiceover family and world and meet new friends and uh, conquests and I, I, I'm still pinching myself because I'm a gamer, and I'm telling you, I can't wait for this monumental masterpiece to drop. <laughs> That's right. Sizzle. I, I, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't ask you, can you do the iconic We Are Venom line for, oh, for everybody? Bring us all out. do you want? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are Venom. Well, I think we got some, some special surprises coming up for you guys. I think the, the next thing we want to talk about is the collector's edition statue that we have here on this table right here. I, I think it really represents what this game is about. You know, it, you know, I said, you know, I've said in previous interviews, I've talked about, you know, it's called Spider-Man 2 for a reason because we have two iconic characters um, in, this, in this great piece of art, but also is it's going to take two Spider-Men to take on something so powerful, something yep. that they've never been able, there's nothing come their way. I mean, you know, if you look at, you know, whether it's Doc Ock in the, in the first game and then Tinker and, and Miles Morales, like Venom is, a, is literally a whole different beast. Brian, why are you putting on gloves right now? Like that's... <laughs> Of what, these? Yeah, what, 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 what is that for? Well, like, I'm, I'm, Dorian, before we, I think we should play the video first. I, I think we should play yeah. the video. Let's, let's go ahead and play that video real quick. Uh oh What? Uh-oh. <laughs> I need your help! What is this stuff? Wait, Pete! I got an idea! Nice! One more time! On three! One, two, three! Uh, the beautiful. 
Spider-Man 2 PlayStation 5. Oh, my God. Wow. Let me get it. Let me get it. I didn't know about that. I didn't know. They didn't show me that before we came out no, here today. They did not. They, they, did not. Was, uh, they yeah. Wow. Now I have to Y'all get knew what you were secrets, you guys. I knew what they were doing. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. Like, I, like Marvel, so they, they keep everything so tight lipped. I found out about this five uh, minutes before we came out here. That's how serious they are. So, Brian, can you, can you speak to this epic, amazing, beautifulness Not right here? This has been one of the biggest secrets throughout the entire development of the game that we were going to have a, the console and the DualShock. Um, so I, it's, I know we're pretty pumped. I mean, I think, you know, we talk about the symbiote playing a big role. Obviously, it plays a big role here in the design of the console, and we thank, yeah. we thank PlayStation for uh, going above and beyond with the design of it. I know I just worked really closely with everybody on, on the design of it, and I, I'm pretty pumped, man. All, all in all, with that being said, I want to say thank you again to this incredible panel. Thank you guys so thank much for all your hard work.